So here we are, gang. You have made it. Uh, this is the last module uh, for the Introduction to C++ course uh, here at Rock Valley College. Uh, so that means if you have survived to this point, uh, that you are right within grasp uh, of being done. Um, part of the reason I've saved the uh, vector for here uh, at the very last uh, is, uh, number one, you've already seen a lot of this, uh, a vector looks and feels uh, as a data structure a, a lot like an array. Uh, so that'll make things, uh, at least in the beginning, a little bit easier. Uh, on the back side of it, um, a vector does not particularly act uh, like an array. Um, there's a couple of things we do have to um, make um, concessions for when it is that we are using um, a vector. Uh, so essentially what's going to happen is we're going to break down uh, the podcast uh, from one big honking podcast into three smaller ones. This one, uh, the introduction to vectors, uh, and then two usage um, podcasts. Uh, hopefully in so doing, um, we can take uh, what is really a very, very powerful data structure and turn it into uh, something that we can use uh, moving forward. So without introduction, here is vectors. So for those of you following along in the book, if we flip over to 429, we can kind of see the, the introduction part. We'll just keep rolling on through there. Um, a vector is what's known as a container. Uh, it is part of the STL, the standard template library. Um, when C++ has, uh, you know, through its long history, gone through uh, and added more and more and more to its standard libraries, um, developers have really come across this issue of what happens when an array uh, reaches the maximum capacity that we have set aside um, as far as storage goes. Uh, one of the unique qualities of an array uh, is um, that the, the storage for it is contiguous. So what C++, uh, the environment does is say, okay, you have, uh, as, a, as a developer, you have set aside 25 uh, elements. So the compiler goes through and it sets aside 25 storage locations, contiguous storage locations. Um, so if you're thinking about this as like, um, you know, vinyl, so an actual piece of a hard drive, they would be contiguous in sequence. So it would be slot number zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, all the way up through 24. Uh, now, this actually is what makes an array a really fast uh, and a really low overhead um, way to go through very, very large data sets. The, the environment knows um, that uh, as I traverse my way through an array, uh, it is literally going to be the very next storage location. So uh, from, a, from a hardware perspective, um, the environment can really cruise very, very quickly through um, an array to get from you know, the start to the back or starting someplace in the middle and, and proceeding on through. But we are and we have been in the age of big, big data for the better part of 20 years now. Uh, what happens if we have written a program um, that has, uh, you know, considerations for very, very large arrays, uh, 1 million or 10 million or 100 million uh, different elements in there? Uh, now, you know, from the outside, that may seem like, yeah, that's a lot of elements in an array. We'll never run out of space. But invariably, uh, developers work with data sets that are going to be larger than they expected. Um, this really presents you, the developer, with an issue. Uh, so what happens if I know at some point in time uh, during my array operation, it is, for whatever reason, uh, become programmatically clear to me? that I am going to run out of space in my array. Because remember, there are no considerations in the environment. So C++ does not care uh, if you have set aside, you know, 100 million uh, elements in your array uh, and there are 110 million um, elements that you are going to read into here, those 10 million additional array elements simply disappear. Uh, they do not become part of your algorithm. They are not here as part of your data storage. They will not be represented in any way. And finally, the environment will not tell you, hey, by the way, uh, there was 10 million of these entries that I didn't go ahead and do anything with. Uh, so this really is a detriment to you. Um, if you know 
uh, programmatically again. So you're, you're going to have to develop a way to look at the issue of how much space am I going to use? Uh, and if you determine that you're going to run out of space, uh, what you could do is simply copy your uh, data set into an array that's even larger. So if I uh, suspect that 100 million isn't going to do, uh, I would set aside maybe size for 200 million array elements. Uh, but this is in itself a challenge. Remember, an array has to have contiguous storage. So that means I need 200 million of, you know, whatever size it is that I'm going to need. Uh, so if it's a short integer, uh, we're looking at, you know, a very minimum amount of data that needs to be set aside. But if we're looking at strings, now we're looking at, you know, a, a considerable amount of data that has to be put aside. Um, so this really doesn't provide you with enough flexibility. Um, so along the way, uh, added to the standard template library has been the vector. Uh, now on the bottom of 429, a vector acts really very, very similarly to, <coughs> excuse me, an array uh, in that it can hold a sequence of values or elements uh, so we can read stuff into it. Um, it stores those elements contiguously. Uh, so again, that means uh, if we're, we're actually looking at, on a machine level, um, the, the storage, they are actually contiguously stored. Um, and you can use the array subscript operator, so the, the braces, uh, to read the individual elements into the vector. So in that way, um, as we are developing small applications to use vectors, um, it's going to feel fairly familiar in that way. So if everything is so startlingly similar to date, what's different? Uh, number one, and most importantly, uh, you do not have to declare the number of elements in a vector. Uh, you simply have to declare that you have a vector. Uh, the runtime and the compile time environment are going to do what they can uh, to help set aside um, enough uh, storage for you to have to be able to manage that. Uh, number two, uh, as you continue to add elements to your vector, so you know, we have surpassed the 100 million um, element mark. We are uh, approaching the 110 million element mark. We have uh, superseded uh, the 110 million element mark, um, but we have fallen way, way short of 200 million. Um, I can simply add more elements to the very end and not have to worry about any additional storage space. Uh, so in this way, it's a lot more... Um, you know, uh, generous uh, with what you can do with the available resources. Uh, now, most of us don't think of um, our computing environments as having a shortage of available resources, right? So uh, for the most of us, uh, you'll be running a Windows environment. You have, you know, four or six or eight or 60 gig of RAM, whatever you cram into your machines. Uh, you have hard drive space to contain all of your obviously legally obtained movies and music uh, and all of that is well and good um, but when we're looking at really really big data operations we are moving around you know colossally large uh, sets of data open-ended as far as we're aware sets of data we really uh, as developers won't have uh, any sort of uh, idea going into it just you know what the size of the data sets we're going to be playing with are um, so the ability to simply add a new element to the back of a vector, uh, a vector that never really feels quote unquote full, um, that's, that's a really powerful programming tool for you uh, as you're developing. Um, one of the things uh, that's nice about a vector, uh, and it's one of the operations that we'll see here um, in one of the, uh, the next podcasts, is um, just like an array, a vector knows its size. Um, so what we can do is use an enhanced for loop uh, to iterate our way through the vector. Um, and that, you know, it, it doesn't require that we know how big the vector is. Um, so we can, uh, as developers, create these large, somewhat, um, you know, logically open-ended frameworks uh, that because we're using a vector, we rely on uh, the tools built into the standard template template library uh, we rely on those tools to help manage uh, whatever the you know the the relatively small the relatively colossal sizing um, of our vectors might possibly be uh, so arrays are you know 
the best thing since sliced bread. In that case, vectors would be uh, penicillin. Uh, they are, you know, much more impactful than simply not having to cut bread yourself. This is what saves infants all around the world uh, and adults all around the world from dying of relatively minor infections. Uh, so vectors uh, are super great. Uh, they do not require you to know how many elements are going to be in there. Um, but as we're going to see in the next uh, couple of podcasts here, um, there's a couple of added considerations we do have to add to the list uh, just so that we can kind of get by uh, and use our new best friend, the vector.